Number one, cops tase man in the face for waiting behind a traffic stop. There have been countless incidents of law enforcement officers going on a power trip and taking things way too far than was necessary. One such incident happened on November 29, 2022 to a man named Kenneth Espinoza. Body camera footage of the incident shows the whole altercation, yet there is still a huge disconnect between what the Los Animas Sheriff's Office is saying versus what the attorney of the man involved is saying. On the day of the incident, Kenneth Espinoza and his son, Nathaniel Espinoza, were both in separate cars driving down to a Ford dealership. The younger Espinoza got pulled over by cops on Main Street in Trinidad, about three hours south of Denver. Deputy Mikhail Noel, one of the two officers on the scene, told Nathaniel that he was driving too close to his yeah. patrol. Yeah, you're following too closely. Can't you see the roads are icy? You see me slowing down and you're still coming up behind me. As a result of the traffic stop, Nathaniel ended up getting a traffic citation. Right. You're getting a citation, so go ahead and close your door. His father, Kenneth Espinoza, had pulled his truck over behind the deputy while still maintaining a safe distance away from the traffic stop to wait for things to wrap up. But a second officer on the scene, Lieutenant Henry Trujillo, did not like the fact and decided to walk up to his truck. Do you need to be behind this traffic stop? Yeah, I do. Why? It's my son right there. He was following me. Kenneth asked the officer why he was being mean over something as small as this, to which the officer responds that they don't like it when people pull in behind them. Kenneth then fires back by saying... That's what we get paid to do, to pull people over. You don't get paid to be a... This is when the situation begins to get heated. Lieutenant Trujillo threatens Kenneth that if he doesn't leave, he's going to get charged. You, you are not a cop. Over. You don't need to be I behind you. Okay? So you need to leave no, right I now. Don't need to do anything. You I'm got on a five seconds street. to leave. A full-blown altercation that ensues between the two. The officer argues that Kenneth has got no reason to be standing behind the traffic stop. No reason. Do I not pay? Okay. Do you always stop behind cops when they pull people over? I ain't stopped right behind it. Lieutenant Trujillo tells Kenneth to leave one last time before walking away from the man's truck back to his patrol vehicle. It's at this moment and his partner, Deputy Noel, is finished dealing with the traffic stop and walks up to Kenneth's truck. As the officer approaches, his body camera footage clearly shows that Kenneth has his car parked at a pretty safe distance away from where the traffic stop was. According to U.S. law, citizens have the right to record and observe traffic stops and other police activity as long as their actions don't directly interfere with or impede the officer's job in any way. But the deputy was having a hard time remembering that. You need to go. No, I hey. don't. I'm waiting on my son. Right, He's my ride back to Walsam. Leave. Leave. Right as Kenneth started to pull his truck away, Deputy Nicole changed his mind and the situation escalated for the worse. After trying to grab the door handle on the slow-moving truck, Deputy Nicole steps away while shouting and pulls his gun and points it at Espinoza. Instead of getting out of the car, Kenneth slowly backs up his truck and parallel parks it next to Trujillo's cruiser. Noel continues to aim his gun at Espinoza while Lieutenant Trujillo also pulls out his taser. Get out the car! Get out the fucking car! Stop it now! Get out the car! Get out! Get out the fucking car! Get out the car! From there, Footage shows Trujillo forcefully grabbing Kenneth's arm and twisting it backward outside the truck with him still inside the vehicle. Kenneth pleads with the officers to take it easy, saying that he felt as if his arm was going to break. What the lieutenant says to him next, however, is truly unsettling. Okay, you're gonna get lit up. As the struggle continues between Trujillo and the driver, Deputy Nicole walks around the truck and enters the vehicle through the passenger side and uses his taser's drive stun mode on Kenneth multiple times. As Kenneth is forced out of the vehicle, the deputy can still be seen using his taser on him repeatedly. The officers then manhandle the driver outside of the truck as they attempt to put handcuffs on him. God damn, I just... Get the fuck back! Get back! Hey, oh God. he's recording this case? Oh, that's fine. He can record all he wants. This is fucking... Another struggle ensues when Kenneth struggles to get into the patrol car. Both officers deploy their tasers on the struggling driver. A loose barb from Trujillo's taser even hits Kenneth lips. Moments after getting Kenneth inside the back of his car, Trujillo then asks for his ID and wallet. When he resists, the officers double team and drag him down to the icy kind. Get, get out the car. Okay. okay. Get this is how it's gonna work. Okay. You're gonna do what you're told to do. And that's it. That As he's shoved car. against the patrol car, Kenneth can be heard telling the officers that they're taking things too far. Come on, guys. This is sick. Stop. Safe. Come on, man. Fuck. I got his wallet. This is ridiculous. 
Kenneth continued to protest against the officer's inhumane way of handling the situation. Kenneth was taken to jail, where he spent the full day before he got released on a paid bond. Prosecutors decided to not press any charges against the driver, and the case was dropped. But now, Kenneth Espinoza has filed a lawsuit in April 2023, along with his attorney, Kevin Mayer. The lawsuit claims that Trujillo purposely turned off his body camera before transporting Kenneth Espinoza, which stands in direct violation of state law. Additionally, instead of taking him to the hospital in an ambulance for medical clearance, Trujillo chose to take Kenneth to jail first. According to the suit, both Noel and Trujillo wrote police reports that contradicted the actual events captured by the body camera footage. The police report said that Kenneth Espinoza pulled up directly behind the deputy, but the footage that we just watched clearly shows that he was actually parked much further away. Another discrepancy arises when Noel wrote in his report that he was dragged by Kenneth Espinoza's truck as his hand got stuck in the door handle. However, the lawsuit argues that the video evidence again disputes this claim. Mayer also alleges that Kenneth was stunned by tasers a staggering 35 times, with the majority of them being in the drive-stun mode. This directly contradicts the Sheriff's Department's account, which stated that the taser was only used once. In the press conference that announced the lawsuit, Mayer said, well, it looks like snake bites all over this side of his body. He's got one on his leg that you can see. Kenneth's can son, Nathaniel, also spoke about the incident. Pointing the gun at my father and just watching time stop. Just feeling everything just leave my body. What's even more troubling is the fact that Lieutenant Trujillo has had prior complaints against him that should render him ineligible to even be a law enforcement officer, according to the lawsuit. His track record shows a harassment conviction all the way back from 1998. He has faced multiple suspensions while serving in the Trinidad Police Department alone for violations including DUI and domestic violence incidents. In another case from June 2022, both Noel and Trujillo found themselves facing allegations of excessive force and violations of the Americans with Disabilities Act. The lawsuit involved a deaf woman who was settled in November, just two weeks before the incident with Kenneth Espinoza occurred. Currently, both deputies are still employed by the Los Animas County Sheriff's Department. However, they have been put on administrative leave while an internal investigation takes place to determine the outcome of the incident. Unfortunately, the barbaric treatment of Kenneth Espinoza isn't an isolated incident. In fact, there is plenty of precedence of taser encounters where things can end up much worse. In our next story, we'll see how a man ended up losing his life after getting tased. Number two, cop sentenced for life after tasing a suspect to death. In 2016, Sergeant Marcus Eberhardt, a former East Point police officer, received the life sentence for the death of Gregory Town. He was found guilty on all charges, including felony murder and aggravated assault. Another officer involved, Corporal Howard Weems, was also convicted in Towns' death and received a five-year prison sentence with 18 months to serve. Officer Weems was found not guilty of felony murder and aggravated assault, but was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, reckless conduct, and violation of oath of office. Before the judge ruled on Weems' sentencing, Aisha Smith, Towns' girlfriend and mother of their child, gave a heartfelt speech about the impact of the officer's actions on her and their son. Ms. Smith shared her pain and asked the judge to consider that these officers had taken an oath to protect the community. At the time of the incident, their son was just three months old, and Ms. Smith hoped that this verdict will provide closure and make it easier to share the story with him in the future. The incident took place on April 11, 2014, when the two officers responded to a domestic violence call. Towns attempted to flee from the officers but was eventually caught. After being handcuffed, Towns claimed that he was too exhausted and tired to walk to their patrol car. In an attempt to make him comply, the officers deployed their tasers on the winded man. Towns lost consciousness shortly after and passed away. The prosecution argued that the officer's use of the taser violated policy, as Towns was already handcuffed and struggling to breathe. They claimed that the repeated tasing contributed to his death. On the other hand, the defense contested that Towns' death was completely unrelated to the taser and instead attributed to a rare sickle cell trait. They argued that the officers were justified in their use of the taser due to Towns' resistance and attempt to evade arrest. During the court proceedings, several family members spoke on behalf of Officer Weems, appealing for the court to show leniency in his sentence. Officer Weems himself expressed condolences and tried to explain his actions, stating that he was unaware of any potential medical condition Towns may have had and that Towns did not request medical attention. I'm sorry that this incident happened. I'm sorry for the Towns family. I'm sorry there is nothing I'll ever be able to say that will allow them to have forgiveness for me or that would change their mind and their belief, he said. Ms. Smith expressed her disappointment with the decision and said, I'm just going to leave it in God's hands. I'm going to stay strong for the family, my kids, and myself. If you want to watch more of these videos and want to expose more of these corrupt cops, please subscribe to the channel.